Today we're going to discuss the next section in chapter 14, 14.6, which is about bases. So based on the Arrhenius concept, a base is something that produces OH- ions in aqueous solution. And according to Brunstad Lowry, a base is a proton acceptor. Well, strong bases, just like strong acids, will completely dissociate or break up into their ions. And so all hydroxides of group 1A and 2A are strong bases. Some are used more than others based on solubility and how much they cost. And all group 2A will actually produce um, two OHs for every, um, for every ion that they're bonded to. Uh, so some examples are select lime, so you have the calcium hydroxide. And so when this dissociates, it will produce a calcium and two OH minus ions. And this is used in a lot of industrial processes because it's really readily available and cheap. Um, we also have the lime soda process, which takes calcium oxide, which is the lime part, and Na2CO3, which is the soda ash, and puts those together. And these are also used to help soften uh, like tap water. Well, some bases don't contain an OH minus, so they wouldn't be considered an Arrhenius base, but they would be considered a bronze lower. And the way that these help increase the concentration of OH is that when they are dissolved in water, they still help increase that concentration. And so here's the general form. Here we've got our base and our acid. And then we've got the BH plus and the OH minus. So here's our OH minus concentration. So even though this may not contain an OH, we're still contributing to the OH concentration. So, for example, we can take ammonia plus water and produce the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. And we can write the equilibrium constant for bases. Instead of a case of A, we're doing a case of B, but it's the same general idea. Here are our products from our overall reaction, and here's our reactant, remembering that we are not including water. A weak bases have a small case of B value, and so uh, and strong bases would have a large case of B value, just like the acids. So let's look at an example. Let's calculate the pH for a 15 molar solution of NH3, where the case of B is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, the first thing that we need to do is identify the species that are contributing to OH concentration, and those species because this is a weak acid based on the case of B value. NH3 is one of our species and H2O is our other species. Well, the case of B for NH3 is larger than the KW for water, so this is going to be our dominant species. And But we can round the equations for both. So we take our NH3 plus our H2O, and this produces NH4 plus plus our OH minus ion, and then we can also look at water, H plus, and OH minus. But as we said, uh, NH3 is going to be our dominant species, and so that's the one we're going to look at. So now we can write the equilibrium expression. So case of B is equal to the concentration of NH4 plus, OH minus, and our NH3 on the bottom, and that's equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is our ICE. So let's rewrite our reaction here. And we're actually not going to include water when we do our equilibrium. So we'll kind of put an extra that so we don't use it. Okay, so our initial concentration, we had 15 molar of NH3, none of our products. If we say that X is equal to the change in NH3 concentration, then this is minus X plus X plus X, and so our equilibrium can be written as 15 minus X, X, and X. And so then um, our next step is to plug into the KB to solve for X. And let's go to the next page to do that. And so our case of B, and what was that value? 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's equal to our products, which were each X. So this becomes X squared over our 15 
minus x. Now we're going to make the same assumption that we did for acids, which is that since the Kb is very small, that this 15 minus x, the x is going to be negligible, so we're just going to turn that into a 15. And so we can solve for x by multiplying by 15 and square rooting. So if I do that math, I get a value of 0.0164 for my x value. Okay, and so then the next thing that I want to do is check my assumption. And so I'm going to take my x value divided by my initial times 100. And if I do that math, I get 0.109%. So my assumption is valid. And now what I want to do is solve for the pH. And so this x value is equal to the OH concentration, which is equal to 0.0164. And there's a few ways that I can go about this. I can take uh, the, the pOH is equal to negative log of the OH concentration, which is equal to negative log of 0.0164. And so that gives me 1.785. And since I know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14, 14 minus 1.785 will give me my pH, which equals 12.215. The alternate way that I can solve for this is to find the H plus concentration and then solve for, P, for pH. So I know that K sub W is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, and that is equal to the H plus concentration times the OH concentration, which in this case is 0 0.0164. And so my H plus, if I do that math, is 6.0. 9, 8 times 10 to the negative 13. And then I can solve for the pH is equal to negative log of H plus, which in this case is 6.098 times 10 to the negative 13. And so I get 12.21. So either way, um, you're going to get the same answer. All right, so here are a few problems with bases. They're very similar to the setup for acids, and we'll talk about them in class. Have a good day.